Let's go ahead and park CA layer and let's think about adaptive layouts. Another thing you've spoken a lot about previously. Um, and it's interesting because so many uh, iOS developers target iPhone. That's their default device to target for is, is, is iPhone. And you know, it used to be the case several Xcode versions ago, Xcode 7 or so, where you choose, do you want to do iPhone or iPad or Universal? And that got removed. And <laughs> it's now just universal by default. You know, we want everyone to have universal apps. Mm -hmm. Why should more folks target iPad, do you think? Well, uh, first of all, there are millions of iPad users around the world. But uh, aside from that, um, it's actually been found that iPad owners um, like spend more money on apps and they're more paid apps uh, that are like specifically for iPad than for iPhone. So, so if you're a developer who wants to make money with your apps, it, it sounds like you may be able to do that more on the iPad than the iPhone. Um, okay, and so, also, so, so to all you developers who want to make money, you want to target the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you go to iPhone. Well, that's a pretty clear cut case, you'd think, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I mean, it depends on also what you want to build, right? Like not every app is going to get purchased. Just because you put a paid app in the App Store doesn't mean... Uh, iPad users are going to be downloading it, but uh, but it has also been found that iPad users, on average, spend two hours a day on their iPad, um, which is generally a like a leisure device, right? So yeah. you you don't think you think of it as more for relaxing. So it's not like people are sitting there making phone calls and doing like necessarily important things. They sit down with their iPad to relax. So um, they're 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 spend, that's how they choose to spend their time. So what I mean is there's more opportunity, I guess, to engage with a the user there, with a the user who wants to actively sit down and relax and, and spend their time like that. Okay, so it's, it's an environmental difference, really, in that your iPhone is with you at the train station, you know, when you've got five minutes spare, you're a bit bored, pull out your phone, whatever, whereas an iPad is almost like a conscious effort. I'm at home, I'm, I, I'm, I'm on the sofa, the TV show's boring, I'm going to do a bit of second screening, iPads, great for that. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. So I think there's some opportunity there. And I also think that generally, well, so this this is based really more on my own sentiment, but uh, I used to work at, uh, at agencies um, like a few years back, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed agency work. And um, But what I got to know is that clients actually paid a lot more for iPad apps than they did for iPhone apps. Even if it was like the same app, but they thought bigger screen, of course, it would cost more. So <laughs> it's, you know, like there's just more like people really think, OK, iPad, more effort, higher quality. Th that's kind of how it seems our clients and by extension, their users seem to think about it. Well, I guess you have literally more real estate to work with. You've got a bigger screen. You can go yep. to town with layouts and, and, and graphics and similar and really make that thing sing because it's you know, 12.9 inches of glass in front of you, it feels amazing. And yeah. it does. It's like, I remember, well, everyone remembers, presumably, the first time you get an iPad and you go on the Maps app, you're like, ooh, wow, I'm just sort of <laughs> surfing the whole world here. It felt amazing. And we take it for granted these days, but it felt amazing and does still feel amazing, but just not as one-off slightly more. But it's there when a great new app comes out. We're like, wow, this app really feels good in my hand. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there is a lot of screen real estate and... And I guess this brings us back to adaptive layout. Mm. That if you have an i uh, an app you only build for iPhone, like it's there's so much screen to fill on the iPad that you really need to kind of think about if if I have an iPad app, why do I have it? Am I adding value or not? Right. So no one wants to be the Twitter app, for example, where for a long time it was sort of big space, and then in the middle the iPhone app more or less. Let's face it, a long thin iPhone app in the middle and just blank space around it. But it it is hard though. And from your perspective, just how hard is it, do you think, to, to, to build an app that looks and works great on all sizes of iOS devices? I mean, what, that's from the very smallest like, mm -hmm. iPhone SE, presumably, up to the 12.9-inch iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really hard to do as an afterthought. And it's much easier to do if you think about it from the start. Right. Like a mistake I make probably at every new project I work on, I, for some feature, I will build a whole screen and I will forget to think about iPhone SE 
And then, oh, for iPhone SE, you need a scroll view because it doesn't fit. And like this happens to me literally every single project. I'm, I'm you know, like zero days since. Kind of. <laughs> Hopefully next time that will be like the first time I don't do this. But it, and, and it's so much harder to then like put it in a scroll view, make sure it works, pin everything. Like um, it, it, it become it's harder if you think of it kind of retroactively. But it's easier if you kind of think of it from the start. Talk to your like designers uh, for your app. Kind of ask them what should it look like. What what would be what would be the simple way for me to make this effective on this bigger screen or on a smaller screen? So it sounds like we could wind back to uh, what do you want Newton Dub Dub 20 and say, I'd like an option to say my view controller should just scroll automatically if it needs to. <laughs> that would be brilliant. Yeah, I yeah. love it. <laughs>